A very good morning to one and all. In roughly about 30 minutes, we'll be witnessing a pattern. And it's no ordinary pattern. It's a pattern which is fought with facts, knowledge, and most importantly, your diplomatic strategies. Yes, you all guessed it right. So I welcome you all to the ninth iteration of SIA GSD's Model United Nations. $800 billion. That's the amount the world lost to the financial crisis and financial crimes in just one year. And with the world pivoting towards cashless economy, these numbers are not ready to decline. To address the exact problem, I introduce you all to our first committee, the Commission of Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice, with its agenda fighting international financial crime in an increasingly cashless economy. We all remember the attack of 2611, the attack of Al-Qaeda on United States. But fortunately, we haven't seen attacks on such a big scale in recent times. But it's no time to relax. It's time to end these attacks once and for all. And to achieve the exact solution, I introduce you all to our second committee, the United Nations Security Council, with its agenda, the threat to non-state terrorist groups with special emphasis on Islamic states. In recent times, our news channels are filled with just one news, and that's the death of news itself. News is a place where we practice our freedom of speech to its fullest, but it's getting difficult. And to address this issue, I would like to introduce our very own Indian committee, All India Political Party Meet, with its agenda, discussion on freedom of speech and expression, with special emphasis on freedom of literature bill. All these committees won't be a well-oiled functioning machine without our EBs keeping all our, uh, all our members on their toes. So, it's time to meet our EBs. We have Drishti Jain, the chairperson of CCPCJ. Sartha as the chair of UNSC. <laughs> Ali as the chair of AIPPF. <laughs> but the chair are not alone. They have their vice chair with them. So let's introduce them as well. We have Riha as the vice chair of CCBCJ. <laughs> Shabriz as the vice chair of UNSC. <laughs> and Shinit Shetty as the vice chair of EIBPM. <laughs> These committees, their agendas, the participant, in fact this whole event, won't be possible without the support of our principal Dr. Atul Kiyokar, sir. Our registrar, Vijay Rasmi, ma'am. And our dear student council in charge, Dr. Smita Kumar. I sincerely thank them on behalf of our team and all the participants present here to give us such a help to give us such a powerful platform where we can discuss and share our ideas. Now, I would like to introduce you all to our Secretary General, Sakshi Gavri, and invite her to say a few words.
their points. So, I, Sakshi Gavli, the Secretary General, declared the ninth edition of SIS GST Model United Nations 2023 open. <coughs> now it's time for participants to uh, go to their respective classes. Our OCs will guide you, and we'll begin in round about 10 to 15 minutes. Thank you so much. The cups are devices that are laptop she connected. Then she could make them. Actually, those who are sitting over there, could you please come beside me? As a phone, so nothing like a net. No, no, either engine. My laptop she connected and then up and then several inch connector are locked. So I'll take a whatever checker. Our device is connected. Your options are yield to another delegate, another delegate means 
another country, not your own delegate. Okay, another uh, another country delegate. You will the chair which is to us, in which case we will move on to the next delegate. And you will show points of information which is for questions. Now points of information we will be using only when we have more than 10 seconds left. So the idea is 10 seconds per point of information. Okay? So if you have 11 12 seconds, you take one POR if you want to take a POR that is. Alright? Clear so far? Okay. And all of your, I think you should. Thank you. 
Financial world recognizes the efficiency and stability of the U.S. banking system. Our financial companies like American Express and Visa have facilitated millions of cashless transactions across the world. Global trade, including import and export transactions, are quickly processed by the SWIFT banking network, in which the U.S. is actively contributing. However, one concern is nations like China artificially manipulating their currency to boost exports. This goes against the principles of fair trade and is the reason of majority countries rejecting trade in uh, Chinese currency yuan. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your speech. Yes. 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 Yes.
if there any uh, if there any RBI guidelines, if there any RBI circular which have come across in terms of the government itself using blockchain, something for you to look at. I don't want an answer for this. I'm just giving a remark, general remark. After listening to your speech, which is great because it's making me think. It's, so that's a that's a plus, right? But just something for you to look at and explore. That's it. Nothing else. Uh, okay, we have a space for one more speaker. Uh, Memonition machine to uh, speak. Please take the up. Okay, so in this moderate process, we have space for one more speaker. So, all right, we'll take a little bit of Point of order. Point of order. On? Uh, a factual area in the chip. In the chip? Why? Yeah. So, points of order are why? Oh. And second, Technically, in a moderate pocket, you don't ideally make points of order because those speeches, so you make points of order usually in GFS speeches because um, those are the ones which are on record, right? There's a formal debate and then there's an informal debate. If you remember when I explained the RFP session, I talked about a formal debate which was the GSL and then an informal debate which was the moderate pocket. So if you wish to respond to any sort of um, uh, any sort of statements being made by other countries in the moderate pocket, your best way forward would be to address them in the moderate process. If you wish to take it to the GSL and put it on record, then um, you should handle that tax free. What, what do I mean by that? You should, handle, you should frame your sentences in a way that, so, so, so that there are, any, any, are there any references that you wish to make to the statements of moderate caucus are made in a tactful manner. Like you sort of cover it up and then say it. Right? If you wish to address anything, if you wish to answer it in any way whatsoever. Was that clear? Was it confusing? I hope not. Because I was trying to convey something. But I hope it was conveyed. Right? Cool? Okay. Very good. France, you have to close on anything. Cashless economy is useful to individuals in the of a country as it is more convenient and it's easier to track expenses and keep a record, which helps in budgeting and tax purposes. But apart from that, it ensures a greater sense of security as it increases transparency and accountability, so it's easier to track. It helps businesses grow and expand internationally, even in the COVID-19 pandemic. It, and it also reduces the scope of black money and corruption and increases transparency. However, there are a lot of challenges to a cashless economy, and a large disadvantage consists of privacy issues and hacking up accounts. And that a large unorganized sector in mainly developing countries may not be able to switch to a cashless form of payment that is easy. Furthermore, there are a lot of increased chances for frauds or scams taking place at a large scale, as what took place in the crypto exchange FTX in the USA. The funds collapsed because it did not have any assets backing their investment. Roughly $477 million were stolen from the fund in an alleged hack. What are the governments doing to prevent and curb such And cashless um, forms of payment such as crypto do not have any tangible value and do not have any reserve funds, uh, which um, might get uh, further problems. Thank you. Thank you, Director. All right. Uh, so we have uh, we have we have seen from all the uh, all the time spots, so there are no more uh, uh, the no more uh, space. So there are no more participants speaking in the moderate caucus. However, if you wish to continue on this moderate caucus, now what we'll be doing is asking for a motion of extension. So in a motion of extension, you can go for 50% um, or less of the actual time that was there for the original moderate caucus. So since this, this was for 15 minutes, which is um, 10 speakers, we can entertain our extension motion for five speakers or less. All right. So are there any motions for extension? All right. Seeing none, please revert to the GSL. Um, delegate of India was on the GSL list. At the same time, I would like to take more names for the GSL. Are there any uh, other nominations wishing to add anything to the GSL? I see you don't want to speak. Just give me names. We will not go to the GSL. Just give me names to, to put something on the list. That's it. All right. Delegate of France, followed by USA.
Okay, we'll take uh, uh, motion paper, the motion paper ready of China. What is your motion? Followed by India. With the prior permission of the executive board, the delegate of China would like to suspend formal debate and enter into a moderated caucus on the topic solutions for the prevention or prevention of money laundering. Thank you. First speaker time 90 seconds and uh, total speaker time 15 minutes. Alright, thank you. Thank you. And moderate topics is not having agenda. So, for time period? For 90 seconds. So, total time period for unmoderate topics. So, so, remember what we had in the beginning? Five minutes. So, you had free for a discussion, there wasn't any topic or anything. So, unmoderate topics does not require a topic. It's just free for discussion amongst yourself. You can do whatever you want. You can take a nap. Anything you want to do. In fact, it's not a nap. So, unmoderate topics for five minutes, correct? Alright. So, which motion will you vote upon first in this case? Correct. So, uh, uh, before that, yes, Delegate of Japan. You want to make a motion? Okay, we ideally recognize three speakers, uh, three member nations for motion. So, we'll take a motion by the Delegate of Japan. Yes. So, Delegate of Japan would like to put forward a moderate, uh, moderate caucus for 15 minutes and 90 seconds for each speaker. Uh, on the topic of discussing overall effects of cryptocurrency on the financial world.
Delegate of China, any Can you repeat the order? Oh, right. China, US, France, it, I will send it on the China, USA, France, Italy, UK. China, US, China, India, USA, France,
risky investment, the risky investments and also limit their usefulness as a stable medium of exchange. Uh, cryptocurrencies uh, has a lot of potential uh, for illegal activities as they have been associate, associated with money laundering, tax evasion and the purchase of illicit goods from the dark web. Thank you. You have to defend the No, 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 Uh, uh, what, uh, what the delegates of Italy, we have sort of noticed that all of the countries, of, uh, all of the delegates of other countries over here are mostly talking about the benefits of how cryptocurrency can uh, increase efficiency, increase transparency. Uh, but all of that is fine, but right now uh, our agenda, our, main, uh, our basic agenda is uh, to to see uh, how crime exactly is increasing in the cash, is, is increasing the cashless economy. Uh, I believe uh, the delegates of India talked about creating their own cryptocurrency, where uh, which can be regulated and uh, the government can keep uh, keep an eye on all of the transactions. That uh, I don't think that can possibly happen because blockchain is open for all and people can create their uh, own cryptocurrency to a very large extent. For example, in Italy, all of the crimes that took place, it uh, took place through a cryptocurrency called Monero and, uh, what, and what exactly ended up happening is that uh, yeah, what exactly ended up happening is that uh, uh, the finances uh, for the mafia was increased, the crimes, uh, crime rates were increased and uh, I don't uh, really think that talking about the advantages would do us any good here. We need tools that can better trace down all of these transactions. Yeah. Thank you, Rajiv, for your speech. Rajiv, can I you have the floor for Uh, respected member of the chair and all the delegates, I would like to speak about the cryptocurrency. Digital currency or cryptocurrency can be used to reduce crime in few of the ways. Improve fact it can improve financial tracking. Digital currency offer a more transparent and traceable way to track financial transactions. Law enforcement agencies can use blockchain technology to trace cryptocurrency transaction and identify criminal activities such as money laundering and drug trafficking and terrorism financing. In a way, I'm speaking about if there is a barter system, we can still trace a particular cryptocurrency to a particular maker. Rather than a government having its own cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. a particular cryptocurrency can be tracked to its origin. I'm not talking about a government making a system and regulating it. Rather than government tracing the origin of that cryptocurrency to track criminals rather than having their own system. Lower the transaction fees. Digital currency can reduce the Cost of transact, uh, financial transactions. Currently, for making the currency, a uh, country spends a lot of money. But as in a digital asset, that currency can be maintained on already present servers and most of the places. It can even reduce the space which and the institutions which are made to produce the currencies. That can be reduced to a certain amount if the, in the presence of digital currencies. Increased financial inclusion. Digital currencies can provide financial services to people who are excluded from financial banking systems, reducing the likelihood of them engaging in criminal activity. Well, thank you for
before that, sorry. Yeah. Can the delegates who have already spoken in the moderate caucus add their names again? Yeah, so they can add their names again, but we will look at the definition in terms of delegates who haven't spoken yet. We will come back and first. You can, you can try that. If we have slots open, then we will put them. So we are talking about cryptocurrency. 
we are talking more it's not stable, we are talking it's whether it's safe or not. But we all know that other countries are also adopting it. It's more stable, it's becoming more stable again. There are headers, there are public ledgers, there are private ledgers in cryptocurrency. It is becoming more stable because some minds are coming and working for it. Now, it's funny how a country like China can comment on our geographical instability, which is again a geographical phenomenon now, but they are not sure of their own character stability in the geopolitical world. They are banning cryptocurrency, yet they are secretly developing digital yuan. That is, we, we are still not sure whether they are investing it. There are many reports that are investing in Japan in their, in their funding. And these all things should be also kept in mind while speaking about other countries' stability, uh, stability. But thanks to you, thanks to you, we can still move to a casual economy as, Java, as, as a country. Japan has moved to casual economy more post pandemic. Once again, pandemic was your, your gift to the world. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you, Arke, uh, for our speech. Uh, we can take one more speaker. Uh, we
पॉइंट ऑफ पर्सनल प्रिवेलेज
Uh, I'm not coming to the question. So India has been buying, has now become the second biggest buyer of Russian oil, which we respect as India's sovereign decision. We can't dictate other countries' policies. But don't you think that's directly funding the war in Ukraine and innocent Ukraine, Ukrainians are losing their lives every day? We want to rush into the question.
as a member of the Financial Action Transport Board, the Domestic Transport is airmen and CFT recommendations into its domestic training system. Similarly, as a member of EU, Germany implements airmen and CFT measures which are introduced in EU anti money laundering directives and issued periodically in order to maintain regularly consistency across the EU. Alright, thank you, Dalgir. Um, you, you right. Alright, so when you are replying to the chip sent to you and you are, your answer is in the same chip, um, state it again that this is from, from so and so country to this country again. Because otherwise, for example, if I get a chip which is from the country A to B and then country B is replying to it and then you don't tell me that this is the country B is replied, I can deduce right now but then I will not be able to know if this is for sure country B is replied to that. If you are applying the same piece of paper, so just state that India is uh, like, I'm so sorry. Just, reply, just state the uh, country D is reply to this and then um, and then send that chip forward. Alright? That's it. Okay. Cashless economy is not foolproof solution to prevent financial crimes as criminals may adapt to new technologies and find new ways to exploit vulnerabilities in the financial system. Additionally, it is crucial to ensure that there are robust security, cyber security measures in place to prevent hackers from accessing and stealing sensitive financial information. In conclusion, adoption of cashless economies prevent both benefits and challenges to fight in the international crime. While it can make it easier to track and monitor financial transactions, it can also lead to the financial exclusion and present cyber security risks. Risk. Therefore, it is important for governments to implement measures to ensure the security and inclusivity of cashless payment systems. There should be a ratio between cash and cashless transactions depending upon various factors like literacy rates, population and technological aspects of the country. Since the entry of China into the Financial Action Task Force FATF in 2007, China has been committed to active communication with the FATF and its member states while earnestly implementing and timely completing the action plan of China to improve anti-money laundering and anti-terrorist financing system as promised by the Chinese government. To back this up, in 2012, the FTAF formally ended the follow-up procedures for mutual assessment with China indicating that China basically met requirements of core and key provisions in the FATF recommendations. So even if the FATF recognizes China capable enough to meet the basic requirements, then China is not interested in other countries' opinions. Alright, thank you for your speech, Alege. We will move on to the next speaker before that delegate of the US who wants to point of information. Uh, the delegate does not have any time for you to point of information, so why should Alright, we will move on to the next speaker, the delegate of South Africa. You have the South Africa. Yeah. Yeah. You have the floor for... Uh, no, it's... Uh,
favor, please raise your placard. We require seven minutes.
the banks need to track many things, like a single beneficiary receiving money from many originators. This is a common symptom of terrorist financing taking place as the sole organization gets benefited by many other people in the form of donations. Once the financial transactions intended towards extremism are identified, then many acts like freezing the assets it should be applicable rather than sanctioning the whole country. Also, as it is mentioned a lot that China funds Pakistan in an act of terrorism, these are nothing but completely baseless. As from the official website of Indian Council of World Affairs, it states that the China-Pakistan economic corridor is basically to improve, the, improve and connect the northwestern Chinese province and with the Pakistan port of Gwadar through a network of roads measuring around 3000 kilometers. If India helps the neighboring country Sri Lanka in economic depression, it is said to be helping neighbors. But when China and Pakistan does it, it is said to be terrorism. This is nothing but hypocrisy of the western countries towards the eastern countries. Thank you. Alright, thank you Arikit for your speech. Um, Director of Japan, you have a group for 90 seconds. Uh, Japan has taken a number of uh, measures to combat terror financing including the following legislative, uh, legislative framework Japan has established a comprehensive legal framework to combat terrorism financing including the act of prevention of transfer of criminal proceeds which criminal, criminalizes the financing of terrorism and provides for measures to freeze terrorist assets, assets. International cooperation Japan is an uh, active participant in international efforts to combat ter terror financing including uh, through its participation in FATF and other regional and international organizations. Japan also provides technical assistance and training to other countries to help them strengthen their own anti-terrorism financing framework. Enhance due diligence. Japan, Japanese financial institutions are required to conduct enhanced due diligence on customers and transactions that are considered to be high risk for terror financing. This includes monitoring of transactions, customer identification and verification and ongoing risk assessment. Overall, Japan has established a comprehensive framework to combat terror financing and the country is actively engaged in international efforts to strengthen the global response to this issue. Thank you. Alright, thank you Jalabi for your speech. Delegate of United Kingdom, you have the floor for the I would like to speak about how financial crime is related to terrorism. Terrorism financing as well as money laundering from for terrorism, all types of financial crimes. Sometimes someone will commit financial crime to get money to finance terrorists and terrorism. However, giving money to these causes is a financial crime itself. Primary, tax invasion, money laundering, counterfeiting, corruption, even the finance of terrorism. These are among the list of crimes unable to use of cash. The attempt to crack down on this crime is driving government and range of companies to pursue a potential of a cashless society. Cash plays a big role in crime. I think there is a reason cash is staying, says Harvard economist Kenny Robot, who has written extensively on the cost and benefits of facing out paper currency. Even though we have Bitcoin, gold, coins, uncut diamonds, you still find cash play major role in terror finance. Because it is a basically a government license, an anonymous currency. It has very liquidity, very high liquidity, low transaction cost, you can spend cash anywhere. All of these other things, like you take gold coins and to someone, and they will actually so a lot of uh, trouble to verify. So, Rubox says because most people only use cash for small transactions, if a hundred dollar bill was eliminated, it could have a significant impact on crime and help boost tax revenue by eliminating tax invasion without most consumer noticing. Getting rid of hundred dollar bills and even fifties is hardly going to end crime. But those, uh, but those bills are very convenient because cash money, store money, it is a big cost in laundering operation. I don't think it is the only step to take, but it is a very light hand. That one that I don't think will affect any ordinary people. Okay. Thank you for your speech. United States of America. You have a slow for ninety seconds. Terrorists require funding to recruit and support members, maintain logistics of and conduct operations. Thus, preventing terrorists from accessing finance, financial resources is crucial to successfully counter the threat of terrorism. Now, US has, uh, the FBI has taken several steps to protect this uh, money, money uh, terror financing domestically within the US. Hence, we have uh, seen a reduced number of uh, terror, terror attacks in US. However, the, and also the CIA has, CIA has been collecting intelligence on over the world over terror financing and often shares it with other countries and their intelligence agencies, including the Interpol also. 
Uh, now this includes Iran majorly because it uh, funds uh, terrorist organiz organizations like Hamas, which attack, launch attacks in Israel, and also uh, our ally Saudi Arabia. It, it has been accused of uh, terror financing in, uh, by funding rebels in Yemen and sponsoring their proxy war. Uh, also, uh, China, although we don't have any evidence of government funding or any terrorist organization, several businessmen in China often do illegal transactions in the black market with North Korea and also transfer uh, uh, tech technology to Iran, which is again banned with, with, because of uh, violations by the Iranian regime on its own people. So, thank you. All right, thank you, Alec, for your speech. Eight two questions. Yes. Okay, eight back to the chair. No, you. I would like to talk about the financing of terrorism. Terrorist financing involves uh, solicitation and collection of funds with the intention to support illicit sources. Sadly, South Africa, including many African nations, has been gravely stressed as in the inadequate knowledge about the AMN and CDA by the FBA. So, but there is a silver lining as we can prevent, detect and punish the illegal funds entering the financial system by various means. Yes, as it can be harder to place and monitor financial transactions. However, there are several steps uh, at our country we can take to combat uh, terror financing in the cashless economy. So, uh, our suggest suggestions would be uh, to strengthen anti money laundering laws. Uh, we can uh, strengthen its uh, AML laws to make them more effective in detecting and preventing uh, terror financing. We suggest uh, other countries to do the same. Another method would be to uh, monitor financial transactions, illegally use sophisticated uh, technologies such as big data analysis and artificial intelligence to monitor financial transactions and detect suspicious patterns. This can involve uh, monitoring uh, online uh, payment systems, credit card transactions and other pay uh, digital payments to identify any suspicious activities. Uh, another uh, method would be to improve uh, inf information sharing. Any crime which results in a profit can be used to finance terrorism. 
This means that a country may face terror is a finance risk, even if the risk of a terrorist attack itself is low. Sources of terrorist funding include, but are not limited to, low-level fraud, kidnapping for ransom, the misuse of non-profit organization, illicit trading commodities like charcoal, damage. Understanding funding of previous attacks, we can help prevent attacks in the future. In Germany, it is powerfully employed to prevent misuse of the financial system for the purpose of money laundering, terrorist financing, and other criminal companies, the Banking Act, KWG, the Insurance Supervision Act, and other such acts. Also, the main aim is to ensure transparency in business relationships and financial transactions using specific precautions on the risk-oriented basis. which are related to terrorism. We have continued to strengthen our legal and regulatory frameworks. This includes implementing law and regulation that criminalize terror, financing and provide for penalties for those involved in such activities. We have cooperated with our international allies such as USA by sharing information and intelligence, conducting joint instruction and cooperating with